person, so to speak. The topic of my talk is actually not the latest vintage. It's some uh, work which I did with my then student Jeff Pike a couple of years ago, and I plan to talk about it in, in, um, in the previous Poisson conference, which didn't happen. So some of this is just material that I never got to talk about, and so I want to take the opportunity. One downside of it is it's not especially fresh in my mind, so I really had to actually read my own paper and to remind myself. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's first start out with a bit of motivation. Uh, so actually, my motivation for uh, looking at this uh, topic came from work on Barnest theory together with David Lee Bland back then. Uh, so the setting is that you have a Lee group point. By the way, I'm, I'm going to use throughout this notation, which I learned from a paper of Enrique and Matthias and uh, Ali, that Lie group points are denoted like this, and Lie algebra points like that, when the two arrows come together. So if you have a Lie group point and the corresponding Lie algebra, point, then there's uh, a Van Es map, which uh, for this setting was defined by Weinstein and, and Xu. So it goes from the group complex, group point complex, the Lie algebra complex, which is the Chevrolet Eisenberg complex. So the notation used only when A is integrable? No, it means in general, any Lie algebra. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the, at the case where. I was trying to make a joke that your notation for A is only when A is integrable. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't derail me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so this was uh, my saying, Shuri, they introduced this Van Est map for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was generalized by um, uh, Camilo Appa and Marius Kreinisch to differential forms. <laughs> this Van Est map takes values in the veil algebra which they defined. So I should say, uh, so this was Heinrich, and there's al also the super uh, geometric description of this to large Mechter. And, well, actually, this super geometric description gives a bit of a, of a hint of what we are aiming at, because this complex, of course, can be viewed in terms of super geometry as smooth functions on this vector bundle A if you shift the degree by one. And the way Raj defined this veil algebra was as smooth functions on the tangent bundle of A. If you shift both vector bundle directions a degree by one. And so that's why it becomes a bigraded algebra. Bigraded algebra. And now basically the question we were asking ourselves, so, so what if you re replace this, uh, which is a double D algebra, TA, with just any double Lie algebra. So what's the correct definition of the veil algebra for any double Lie algebra? Uh, any double Lie algebra. Right, so the idea was that we are really looking at the tangent bundle of, of G as uh, the algebra over G. So it's a VB groupoid, no, LA groupoid, LA groupoid, right? And so it gets differentiated to a double V algebra. And so what about just any double V algebra as opposed to just this one? No, I should say, we, we don't really have many more examples of double Lie algebra. This is by far the most important one, but we expect to get a bit better understanding of how kind of the, the way algebra works in its classical description and so on. All right, so that was our motivation. Well, this 
application to Vaness actually never quite came about. We never got to work it out. And, and I would say this is like forthcoming co collaboration with Maria probably. Anyway, so to get started, I should tell you a bit about uh, double vector bundles. Probably most of this is known material to you, but Double vector bundle. It's a manifold which has two vector bundle structures over A and B. And well, the definition of double vector bundles has gone through several iterations. The original definition due to Pradines and then was rephrased by McKenzie and then was rephrased again by Grabowski Rodkiewicz. And now the definition is actually quite simple. It just says that the two vector bundle structures should be in such a way that the two scalar multiplications commute. That's all you need to know. So the two vector bundle structures should be compatible, which in McKenzie's description was a long laundry list of compatibility of additions and multiplications. But Grabowski Rodkiewicz discovered all you need to require is the scalar multiplications commute, and the rest comes for free. Two vector bundle structures such that the scalar multiplications commute. And then one finds that it's automatic that A and B, these two bases, are themselves vector bundles over the same base. You always get a diagram like this. Every double vector bundle this really gives rise to two vector bundles. And there's actually a third vector bundle which is called the core. can be defined as the subset of D on which the two scalar multiplications coincide. Or you can say it's uh, the pre-image of M as sitting inside A times B. Right? So you, get, you have a map to A, you have a map to B, and so you look at things that under both projections map into the base. That's the core. So the core is usually denoted by C, uh, but for the purpose of my talk, I want to denote the dual of the core by C. Okay, so I get the experts confused. I will work uh, with the various dualities that I want to discuss. So let's quickly go through the main examples. So, so far, the, the, the core is uh, uh, a sub bundle of D, or it's a bundle over M? It, it's oh, it's, it's, yes, it's also a bundle over M. Yeah. So, as I was saying, uh, this P image is such that the two scalar multiplications commute. So, each of them actually gives rise to a scalar multiplication on this core, and then it becomes itself a vector bundle. And uh, it's, uh, it's a sub-bundle of D, or not? Uh, yeah, it's a fiber bundle, right? D mm -hmm. itself, okay, it's a vector bundle, but in two ways, so it's not... Mm -hmm. So, so it's, 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 a, it's a third vector bundle, just like A and B. Mm -hmm. So one shouldn't think of D as a vector bundle, it's a double vector bundle. Okay, okay so first example is... Okay, Just like that. So it's the three vector bundles A, B, C, and you look at this uh, fiber product, and you have projection to A, you have projection to B, and you have this diagram. That's a double vector bundle. And the simple fact is that actually every double vector bundle is isomorphic to this example. This is really the model, but non canonically. Then there's another example which I kind of like, which is very geometric. Actually, somewhat relevant for Vanette. If you have a manifold Q and you have two submanifolds with clean intersection, M1 and M2, 
clean the intersecting set manifold M. So clean the intersection means that tangent bundle of M1 intersect tangent bundle of M2 is the tangent bundle of the intersection. So it's more general than transverse intersection. Then in this context, there's what we call a double normal bundle. This a vector bundle over the normal bundle of the intersection inside M2 and a vector bundle over the intersection the normal bundle of the intersection inside M1 and both of these are vector bundles over the intersection. So there's a double normal bundle. There's a way of, of describing the double normal bundle as an iteration, but there's also a symmetric way of describing it, but I guess I don't have time to get into this right now. Egon, just to clean a bit the notation. There, M1 cap M1 no, is no, M, no? Yeah. This is just M. Yeah, it's just M, yeah. And there too. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's, of course, the most important double vector bundle, which is uh, the tangent bundle of the vector bundle. Uh, there's much more to say about this one, and so I'll, I'll get back to this later. What is the core of the second one? Oh, the core of this second one is... Uh, core is tangent bundle of Q, quotient by the sum of tangent bundles of M1 and M2. So this is zero exactly if the intersection is transverse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some basic properties. <coughs> Properties of double vector bundles is uh, one important thing is that there's a triality. Triality. So if you have one double vector bundle, then there automatically are two more, which I denote T prime. prime prime. And this is why I'm, I'm using. C in, uh, for, as a notation for the dual of the core, so I don't want, want to get stars here. So it goes in kind of cyclic permutation. So for this one, the core is C dual, for this one, the core is A dual, for this one, the core is B dual. They get cyclically permuted. And uh, these come with, um, with pairings. And this may be one way of understanding the triality. Well, roughly speaking, this D prime is the dual bundle. If you view D as a vector bundle over B and you take its dual, then you get this D prime. It's, it's roughly speaking because oh, there are always some small sign issues on the core, which I kind of want to not discuss here. If you put the signs right, then this is a triality. So if you would uh, take D prime, 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 that's D again. So that's kind of nice. And but one can, one can fantasize a bit and say, well, maybe double vector bundles are a bigger diagram that is determined by one face, and you are looking at three possible faces describing the same diagram. So is it possible to put somehow the double vector bundle on a cube? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you can put them in a the cube and look at them as the face of a cube. Yeah, you can do that. And then it's just, you would say a double vector bundle is a cube with certain properties that would de be determined by the face. I'm not sure if that makes the definition Easier. Well, not easier, but it would explain that. Mm. No, we, we have a way of uh, describing the triality too, but uh, again, I don't have enough time to explain this right now because of the The main vertex of the cube is going to be the cotangent of the. That's one way of doing it, but that's actually a smaller way of doing it. Ah, mm -hmm. ah okay. okay. So that's the triality, and, and the other important thing I need is fat bundles. So. There's this core C, and uh, well, the, the core C 
has an extension like this. There's a vector bundle C hat, also a vector bundle over M. And what is this bundle C hat? I can say in terms of its sections. The sections are the functions on D, which are linear in both directions. So let me indicate it like this, so kind of double linear. So it's linear horizontally and linear vertically. That's what the sections of this C hat are. And you can understand this exact sequence in this way rather easily. So if you have something that's linear in both directions, you can just restrict it to the core, but then it just becomes linear because on the core, the two scalar multiplications commute, uh, uh, coincide. And these are linear functions on A and a linear function on B. You can uh, just pull them both to D and then multiply them. So that's the exact sequence. So you have a fat bundle for C, and then similarly, you of course have also A hat and B hat, just by cyclic permutations. All these things have various geometric interpretations. Of course, you can define them as double linear functions here, but you can also view them somehow as, uh, as vector fields on D. So there are all kinds of geometric interpretations you can give to these objects. Right, and, and these also come with pairings, but I don't think I need them. Right, maybe this is a good. Time to get to the example. Where is the example? In this case. Example throughout is, is of course the tangent bundle to a vector bundle. Um, okay, so example. We take the tangent bundle to a vector bundle. That's double vector bundle like that. Now this has core is, is V itself. So uh, the core dual would be V star. This is our C. And now we cyclically permute. So here we're going to have Tm V star M. And then we're going to have V star V and M. So what could these bundles be? Uh, this is just T of V star. And this is going to be T star of V. Or T star of V star, they're, they're isomorphic. Always up to this little sign issue that I'm going to ignore. So that's the triality. And yeah, so what are these fat bundles in that case? So as I was saying, we have A in this case is V, B is Tm, C is V star. And so we have some extension of these three things. The A hat is going to be the jet bundle. The B hat, an extension of TM, what could it be? It's the Atia algebraid. Some, sometimes also you know the derivations of these, so it's the infinitesimal vector bundle automorphisms. And the C hat is the jet bundle of the star. the pad bundles. All right. Yeah, and I should mention, um, I said before that uh, every double vector bundle can be split. So they, they're all isomorphic to this A times B times C star. And what is the splitting of a double vector bundle in this case? Well, it turns out splitting of all these things is equivalent. So splitting of any of these. I can split these double vector bundles, and I can split these A hats, meaning splitting these exact sequences. So if you have a splitting of one of them, you get a splitting of all the other ones, and what it means is simply having a connection. So it's just equivalent to having a connection. That's all very nice. All right. Okay, so now I want to get to the 
definition of the real algebra. First for Sorry, maybe just the connection or connections on what? Oh, B. Linear connections on B. Oh, linear connections on B. I mean, it's sort of well known that uh, splitting for the ATR algebra sequence is a connection on B. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can also view it as splitting on the jet bundle. It's also mm -hmm. a connection on B. And mm -hmm. splitting of these double vector bundles, everything is equivalent. Directions by by one, but uh, when you describe it in finite dimensional terms. Okay, so I, I'm just going to give the definition. Algebra. Of D is the bigraded algebra. Functions on M, by, by which I mean, um, so everything is modules over smooth functions. So it's, it's really sections of an algebra bundle. It's another way of putting it. Um, with generators, okay, so N, sorry, and by degree, sorry, one zero, it's going to be sections of A star. So those are the generators in by degree one zero. Zero one to get sections of E star and W one one are the sections of the C hat of the hat bundle with relations. Relations. Okay, the way I've set it up you can probably guess what, what the relation should be. It has to do with this exact sequence. I denote this inclusion by I. Then what I want is that I of alpha tensor beta. So if I have two sections, one of A star and one section of B star, then I can form this. This is going to be a section of C hat. It should just be the same thing as multiplying alpha and beta in the algebra. So that's, and that's the definition. How do we motivate this definition? How do we come up with this? It's actually quite simple. Uh, you can ask yourself, uh, what are the polynomial functions on ND, or double polynomial functions, you might say, on D? You just try to describe the algebra of double polynomial functions. It has exactly the same description, except that here, it's, of course, it's a uh, grade algebra, so where things of odd degree anti-commute. And the double polynomial functions have exactly the same description, except that things commute. Natural thing, really. All right. That's the definition. So, for the examples, that's the example here. That's good. So, in, in this example, the algebra, as you would expect, is just the algebra is just. Of exterior algebra over A star, tensor exterior algebra over B star, tensor symmetric algebra over C. So this is V of symmetric algebra. So as, as you would really expect. And other main examples. So this example, which I just erased, I don't know. Here, the, 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 the supercommutation is with respect to the total 
degree, no? Uh, that's right, yeah. yeah. And then that symmetric is put it in degree 2, or, or uh, 1, 1, or... Yes, yeah, so, so these would be generators of degree 1, 0, this would be generators of degree 0, 1, and these would be generators of degree 1, 1. Example is this one. Uh, so here we can say rather explicitly what the veil algebra is. Namely, it has uh, generators. I mean, we have the definition, of course, but we can express it a bit differently. Uh, it has generators, uh, the sections of V star. Right, the sections of A star, and A st in this case is V. Uh, the sections of B star, but B star is uh, cotangent bundles. So you could actually just take these exact forms. And um, let's see, that is the jet bundle of B star. So you also have to take one jets of sections. Relations are well, what do you need to know? Um, so maybe first say what is the horizontal differential just a function of something in, in by degree zero zero. Um, so this would be a section of uh, V star, and it's just a Schiaparelli Eilenberg differential. Section of no, what I'm saying. Oh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. We didn't introduce the dimensions yeah. here, so let's do that. Yeah, what is missing is oh, the, 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 relation. the relation is missing. Yeah. <laughs> it's relations. What's missing is the relations. <laughs> so the relations are that um, jet of a function times d minus f times a jet is the product in the veil algebra, like this. So that's the very simple description of the veil algebra. Here's some simple properties, I should say, about the veil algebra. Uh, first, there's the simple remark that we again have the triality, of course, because we have with any given double vector bundle, we have two more double vector bundles. And so we, we automatically get three veil algebras. And they are related by all kinds of uh, dualities and pairings. For example, you have a pairing. Give a pairing W P one of D prime prime and W one Q of D prime goes to sections of P plus Q minus one of C star. There's some, some pairings like this. And of course with cyclic permutation. So there are three such pairings. There are also some, some with, with zero, but they're, they're kind of less interesting. So these, these pairings are interesting because um, if one works this all out, then, then one finds that these things have ge more geometric interpretations. Uh, this one can be identified with sections of the exterior algebra over D, if you view D as a vector bundle over A. 
and linear sections. So, meaning you view it as a vector bundle over A and takes its zero algebra, but then there's the other vector bundle direction also, and you can require it's linear with respect to the other one. And likewise, this one is linear sections of mesh D over B. There's some, some pairing like, like this. This then in the examples works out quite interesting. Right. Okay, now I want to tell you about the veil algebras for if you have at least one differential. Maybe I'll put this here. And with this language, the pairing becomes what? What's that? With that interpretation the, of the sections, the pairing becomes what? I'm going to show it in the example in, in a moment. So, uh, okay, maybe you can say it in these, these examples. Uh, what you get is uh, things like linear differential forms on V, linear differential forms on V star, linear multi-vector fields on V, linear vector fields on V star, and some pairings between them. <coughs> right. Yes, yeah, so I want to talk about now veil algebras for VB algebras. That means if I turn on one Lie algebra direction. So I'm looking at this picture. But now one of the directions has a Lie algebra structure. Say uh, D is a Lie algebra over A. This is a Lie algebra. And this being a VB algebra just means that the Lie algebra structure is invariant under the other scalar modification. Right, so this uh, Lie algebra then. Um, I mean, this is, of course, all very classical theory due to mostly McKenzie. If this is a VB algebra, then uh, by duality, this one becomes, uh, inherits a Poisson structure. Well, it's just kind of theory. We all know that if you have a Lie algebra, then this dual bundle inherits a Poisson structure. But now it's also invariant with respect to the other scalar multiplication as well. So this becomes a double linear Poisson structure. And then if you dualize that again, then you get uh, a Lie algebra structure also in, in this horizontal direction on this one. So we get this picture. And now the theorem you get is, okay, so say a vertical v, VB algebra structure. Equivalent to, well, the one V. So first of all, we have these well known facts. I'm not sure if I should, I may I should repeat them. It's equivalent to horizontal V, B algebra structure on D prime. It's equivalent to having a double linear Poisson structure. These are all not well known and, and kind of easy. Prime, prime. Um, but in terms of the veil algebra, it's equivalent to having a vertical uh, differential on, on the veil algebra. So a vertical differential on the veil algebra. For this one. Or it's equivalent to having a horizontal differential Prime, or it's equivalent to having a Gersten Haber bracket on the Vitalis Ruffy D prime prime. The Gersten Haber bracket is like, like a Scouten bracket, and so it's like a super Lie algebra bracket, but you have to do the degree shift in the correct way. And the degree shift in this case is uh, by degree minus one, minus one. So each of them you have to shift. 
Right, so, so just turning on one VB algebraic structure gives rise to all these things, uh, which of course are all in a way this, the same, but uh, the, the point is that everything is related and compatible, of course, right? They are all these parents now popping up already, and so there's suddenly a lot of structure floating around. So, for example, in this example, what do we get? Taking this example, and now I'm turning on, I'm, I'm remembering that this is actually Lie algebra, right? It's right? a tangent problem. And so this becomes, has a Poisson bracket because it's a cotangent bundle. And here we have another Lie algebra structure. And what do we get? Uh, so we get, for example, I mean, you can't, can't even list everything, but we, we get all of this, but. We get, for example, a vertical differential on uh, the veil algebra for TV, which I can restrict to, to say, um, the, the second index I take fixed. And then if you go through the geometric interpretations, uh, what this is, it's linear differential forms on the... And likewise, we get a horizontal differential on the Bale algebra for TV star, which are linear differential forms on the star. And then you get the Gerson Hubble bracket, on, well, we, we get it on this veil algebra for T star V, but because the degrees, I can restrict it to a bracket on either something comma one or one comma something. If I do it like this, then this ends up being, uh, oh sorry, this is not one from any degree, of course, then this ends up being multi-vector fields. And as I said, these things are all compatible in various ways. So for example, there's a pairing between these two. Given a linear differential form on V and a linear differential form on V star, you can pair them and you get a differential form on M. And of course, everything is compatible with the differential. And here, what you get is not just uh, this bracket here, which by, by the way, this is uh, the kind of work uh, um, this is the bracket that uh, Camille talked about a couple of days ago. So in this context of, of K differentials, so there, there's a bracket on, on this case of multi-vector fields. So do you also get quadratic forms and higher order polynomial forms in this picture? You replace one by... Uh, oh, you mean it's supposed to linear? Yeah. That if you replace one by two, then you get quadratic, or? No, I don't think so. I, I, I wouldn't see it. Not, 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 not like that. No, no, I, I think that then you would have to use a different version of Obeil algebra. I mean, so, so what, what I did was I, I made both directions odd. I think if you just make one direction odd, and the other one you can kind of keep classic, then, then you get kind of polynomial things. And, and then you could incorporate those. Well, and, and this one comes comes with a pairing. Uh, this comes with a representation of, uh, because th there's an action of this on uh, part comma zero, again given by by bracket, and this ends up being just sections of wedge B. So this, this representation also comes for free. So, so all, all these structures that you kind of know, they they kind of pop up very naturally. Right.
Okay, so, so, so far for just VB algebra, so now we turn on another D algebra direction. Now let's look at double D algebra. Now we assume that this direction is the yeah, right as well. So then this would be a Lie algebra as well. And here we get an extra Poisson structure. <coughs> right, so this being a double Lie algebra, the, the uh, original definition due to McKenzie is that uh, these two Lie algebraids should form a matched pair. According to Mackenzie, uh, this is uh, a double Lie algebra. By definition, if and only if uh, this D prime and D prime prime form a batch pair, which is a notion which was uh, uh, defined by Mackenzie in Xu. Match pair of Lie algebraids. Right, so that's how he looked at it. He took this uh, Lie algebra. Uh, so, so he took this double vector bundle with two Lie algebra structures, constructed two new Lie algebra out of it. Those are both Lie algebra over C. And then there's a notion of matched pair of such things. So that's his notion of, of compatibility. But now, using uh, Bale algebra, you can reformulate this. By the way, I, I should mention um, a reformulation of, of this definition of double D algebra in terms of a veil algebra, of course, was, was done long before us by, by Ted Voronov, who said that uh, this is equivalent to having two um, commuting homological vector fields on, uh, on this, as you would expect. Right, so, so this is a result which you kind of expect naturally in terms of supergeometry, and we're basically redoing it in terms of classical geometry. So there are some remarks in the chat. Uh, there is someone saying that, that it's not a matched pair, but a Lie bialgebra. What's that? It should not be a matched pair, but a Lie bialgebra. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I misspoke. I misspoke. Yeah, okay. Lie bialgebra. Yeah, so, so just like for, for um, Brinfeld double, yeah. So sorry. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm getting a bit rusty on this. Okay, so the theorem is uh, having such a double Lie algebra is equivalent to, as you would expect. Double Lie algebra structure on D is equivalent to having uh, commuting differentials on the Bale algebra for D. Or it's equivalent to having on uh, the Bale algebra for D prime a horizontal differential in the Gerson upper bracket, which are compatible. and Gerson upper bracket. Yeah. Compatibility just means the kind of expected thing that the differential is a derivation of the Gerson upper bracket and also equivalent to having compatible vertical differential and Gerson upper bracket on the Bale algebra. <coughs> All these things are equivalent. Let's see how this works out in this example. In 
the example, uh, here's the description still of the veil alpha of, of uh, but now we have another Lie algebra structure. So, so now this V is a Lie algebra. And so TV also becomes a Lie algebra. Here we get a Poisson bracket. And then we have another Lie algebra structure here. So now, first of all, I should tell you uh, what I wanted to tell you already. While ago, uh, what, what are the differentials? The veil algebra is generated by sections of V star, uh, one jets of sections of V star, and just uh, well, functions and exterior differentials of functions. And so I should say what's the differential on those kind of things. The horizontal differential of a function Horizontal differential of, of a function is, is just, so it should be a section of V star, it's just trivially Eilenberg differential. So it's uh, the angular star of DF. The vertical differential is just the Dram differential. So this section of V star, this is the wrong form. Then uh, the vertical differential of df, of course, is zero, right? because d squared is equal to zero anyway. Um, what I have to tell you also is what is the horizontal differential and the vertical differential of tau. Um, the horizontal differential of tau uh, should be a section of wedge two of these star. It's just trivially Allenbeck differential again. Vertical differential is uh, well, just to apply that. And that's basically all I need to tell you. I mean, I should also tell you what is the differential of, uh, of a jet, but if I take the vertical differential of, of, of a jet, then it's going to be zero because d squared is equal to zero. And if I take the horizontal differential, well, I know the jet is the vertical differential of something, so dh of dv of tau is just minus dv of dh of tau, and so I can just figure this out by what I already know. So this gives all the information. So this describes the veil algebra of Lie algebra. So, so this, this basically recovers some pretty simple description, I believe, the, the veil algebra of Abad and Kleinich. Right, so some applications, I'm pretty much out of time, I, I realize. Um, so, we have seen that this uh, piece of the veil alpha as linear differential forms on V, uh, with a vertical differential. Inside the linear differential forms, you have now, now that V is a Lie algebra, there are the infinitesimally multiplicative ones. Yeah, so infinitesimally multiplicative ones. Basically, if, if you just imagine Im integrating the Lie algebra to the Lie group point, then it would be multiplicative uh, different forms of the group point, but then differentiated. So there's a notion of multipli infinitesimally multiplicative forms. And in, in terms of the Weyl algebra, mm -hmm. Uh, what it is is just the kernel of the other differential that you have. So, so th this is one, one thing that we can prove. So if, if you go from one to two, so that's one characterization, which is uh, in a paper of Enrique and, and uh, Alejandro. Well, there's a similar uh, result for uh, the multivector fields. So, so they, they could prove this uh, result because, of course, the veil algebra for TV was already there. But what about the, the multivector fields? Sorry, I have to raise it. Apologize. 
Okay. Okay, so you also have um, three of the multi-vector fields, the linear multi-vector fields on V. And again, there's a the notion of infinitesimally multiplicative ones, which in, in the work of, uh, of um, Camille and, and Ping Shu and, and um, no, yeah, but, but, so sorry. And the, the David um, was called K differentials. But, but they can be interpreted as infinitesimally multiplicative uh, multi vector fields. And as you would expect, it's just a kernel of the vertical differential in this case. Well, I think I'm out of time. Um, so there, there, there are various other applications to things you kind of already know, but, but you kind of see them in this framework. Uh, for example, if you look at the Veil algebra of T star B, you get a, a gerson haber bracket. And it turns out this gerson haber bracket is just this uh, Fröhlicher Neienhaus um, Richardson bracket. It, it's, if you uh, specialized to be for the tangent bundle, but you get it for, for any Lie algebra. And then there are various relations between these, and, and well, we had some other applications uh, to representations of homotopy, multi derivations, matched pairs, and so on. And the one application that still remains to be worked out was the one that was on motivation, the application to Vanest. Well, I think we can stop here. Other questions? Thiago? Uh, another example of double Lie algebra it comes from uh, a distribution, I mean, a, fol a foliation on the, on the on the Lie algebra, which is also, uh, and yeah, I mean, this kind of multiplicative, no, multiplicative foliation. foliation, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, did you work out the, the Vive algebra in, in this case? You didn't think about it. Yeah. So it's a good point, yeah. Yeah, just, just didn't think about it. Yeah. There's a question by John Chang. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the right. No, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not sure I understand. So, oh. we were discussing some lead to all algebraic, uh, which is just a it's just the VB quant algebra rate, which is the by cross product of the VB Lee by algebra rate. Does it make sense? Oh, no, so she's writing the question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's go for, let's wait until she writes. And okay. Maybe there was a question, just a second, there was. Yeah, sorry, sorry a rather naive question. Uh, is there some like a quantization interpretation of the VB algebra? Quantization, uh, that's of course also a good question. Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, not, not, not so far. I mean, except of course in simple case, maybe that's what's actually <laughs> one main example that, that I haven't had time to, to mention is of course, if your uh, V is just a Lie algebra, it's kind of interesting, right? And then you get uh, the, the Lie algebra of TG ends up being just the standard Veil algebra, of course. Uh, because in this case, one of the sides is, is trivial, so you could just get the standard veil algebra. And here we know uh, some sort of quantization from the work with Anton <coughs> to uh, uh, Clifford algebra, tensor universal developing algebra with some differentials. Mm -hmm. So whether one can do something similar for more general veil algebras, I don't know. But this example is also kind of funny because um, one thing we learned from this story is that this veil algebra uh, belongs to three veil algebras, there, there, then three more, right? So there's also this one, and then there's <coughs> so one of them is uh, wedge of G star tensor wedge G, and the other one is, uh, what is it? Wedge of G star tensor. And, and, and anyway, so, so there, 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 are, there are three of them. So 
with, with, with brackets and differentials and so on. So the question is, uh, this d, dh plus dv, the sum of the differentials, mm -hmm. is, is, it should be a shared algebraic differential of something. And that something should be a lead to a algebraic variety. That is the question. Oh, that I don't have a good answer to, maybe. Algebraic. Um, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm just not sufficiently familiar with basically two algebra. I, uh, my, my understanding is that double D algebra is slightly more general than the two algebra, right? That's from Matthias yesterday, right? So, so they made one of the sizes trivial. And yeah, you can take the sum of the two differentials. Yeah, I, I don't have anything intelligent to say, I, I suppose. Uh, going back to this example, maybe, maybe I was actually also very happy to, to see uh, how these two differentials do, uh, uh, have in the, in the usual definition of the Weyl algebra. But that this, it's always written as the sum of a Kozul differential and a chevalier Eilenberg differential. I always thought this was kind of, kind of a coincidence that it happens that way. And it turns out that they actually quite conceptually. No, uh, I, I was I going to ask if, when you put these three uh, double vector bundles as size of a cube, I mean, what, what can you put uh, over there? I, I said the cotangent is a, I know yeah, the cotangent is, one can do. but you can put something small. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how, if I should get into this right now. No, no, it's okay. If it's out of time, I, I, I can show you later. Okay. Nice. I'm just curious because uh, there are all these structures playing, uh, interacting uh, uh, around. This reminds me of something that one sees in the following typical situation. You look at some structure, Poisson, or maybe something else, and you look at the sum manifold and try to prove a normal form theorem around the sum manifold. And there the bundle that plays a role is the normal bundle. You move to the normal bundle, and when you realize your object, you typically get uh, well, either vector fields that should plug you to zero, or forms that should be closed, or one one tensor, or mixtures of them. Like if you look at generalized complex or Dirac, probably you get a very confusing mixture of them. So this looks like potentially interesting to put some order in discussing the linear models of some of these structures. <laughs> did, did you try at all? Uh... No, I, I, I can't say that we used very much yet. So, so, so we, we got good understandings of, of things one, one already knows, as I said, but in terms of new applications, we don't have very much yet. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of shocking <clears throat> how a little bit of structure gives, gives rise to so many interactions and relations. I mean, there are all these pairings floating around. I didn't even mention about the Cartan calculus. I mean, so, so on, on wedge of A star, of course, you have also contractions, and, and you have the Cartan calculus. Now, if you do with the Weyl algebra, you have lots of contract, contractions, and like a huge, very confusing Cartan calculus. I, I think in part his question is going to be addressed in Jordan's talk on Friday. Now, this is very general, right? I mean, you, like, if you look at generalized complex... Still in parts. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, what Eckert said at the beginning, right, is that if you have uh, two intersecting things, then you get a double vector bundle, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you have a submanifold in the presence of some other thing, like a foliation, let's say, then you would get your two submanifolds, right? And then there would be a double vector bundle associated to that. Yeah. Double vector bundle, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps a last remark, which is also an application, is, you know, if instead of having just the double Lie algebraid, and of course when you dualize you have the Poisson structure, but then you lose the Lie algebraid in one of the legs, if you put the three structures in the same diagram, right, 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 right. then it's very easy to describe what happens at the level of the Weyl algebra. And this recovers in a very natural way, for example, you know, notions of Lie two bi algebras that were studied before, like higher versions of Lie algebras. 
Yeah, uh, there's the reason for that too. Very recent paper, of course, of, of Enrique and, and Matthias and uh, Ale. There, on top of this, you also have the Poisson structure here. So you have all three structures on all three things, and, and then you get even more relations, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so move and on. if you start taking the tangent of a double, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, you, you cannot do triple and, and so on. It's, it's kind of clear how, how these things stand. Like it's no, the sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, so let's thank Eckert again.